long. It made the game more unique than usual with two mascots on the field. Here he is right now signing autographs for fans. Bark, 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 bark. These B-17s used to house 10 airmen back in the 1940s. One of them will be crouched in the fetal position down here for up to 8 to 12 hours. Rick and Estella, when you're in a vehicle, one of the most common ways for you to communicate with other drivers is by flashing your lights. We're just across from NMSU and underneath the 25 highway, and this is where the body was found. Good evening, Estella. As you can see behind me, family and friends continue to show up at the crash site that claimed Alonso Perez's life. Not only is the $97 million price tag controversial, but people want to know exactly where and which fund from TxDOT this money is coming from. I bought this fan at Walmart today for about nine bucks, and it certainly worked to keep things cool. Back to you in the studio. A Las Cruces based organization says the city needs to catch up with other major cities across the state in terms of how much employees make. Rick, it's a much calmer scene out here this evening after investigators spent all day here checking for city building code violations. As you can see behind me, police are preparing to lock up the Gateway Hotel for good. I can't go anywhere. My stuff's up here. I'm disabled. I live up here. Heated emotions Monday afternoon as people who live at the Gateway Hotel in downtown were told they can't go in. It's just like your normal hotel, you know, it doesn't... It's not like, I wouldn't say it's like bad hotel or nothing. It's, it looks nice, you know. I mean, the conditions have been pretty pretty good for my, my standards, you know. Leland Wilkinson was living at the hotel while he looks for a job. He says he paid $390 a month for a single room with a bed and a bathroom. Although he was content with the standards, El Paso Fire and other agencies say the building poses major safety risk. The gas, the plumbing, some of the electrical are the concerns that we're having from the building official. Egress concerns are some of the biggest um, concerns from the fire department as well as the integrity of some of the, the fire protection systems. David Gamble has lived in the hotel for five years and describes the people who live there. Yeah, there's quite a lot of people in here. Most of us are all retired from one thing or another. Uh, Nobody works, you know, so, uh, I mean, you know, we, they have bad ones in here and good ones. You know. Now, Adult Protective Services and the Homeless Coalition are doing everything they can to help relocate the people who lived at the Gateway Hotel. The assistant fire chief just informed us that 41 rooms here were occupied and they have been in contact with 37 people who lived inside. The homeless coalition, as well as adult protective services, have helped relocate those people. Reporting live in downtown El Paso, Pilar Arias, ABC7. Rick and Estella, nearly two weeks ago, 29-year-old elite medical transport pilot Freddie Martinez asked a Southwest Aviation Service Line technician to add 40 gallons of fuel to the Cessna 421 seat. NTSB investigators say jet A fuel was added instead of aviation gas, and those in the plane knew something was very wrong shortly after takeoff. Southwest Aviation and Las Cruces fueled the plane before the flight. They aren't commenting. I spoke to a manager with a different, unrelated company who's been around aircraft for more than 30 years. Scott Andre says what happened to three of his friends should have been impossible. Well, these guys were based with us. They were our customers. We saw them on a daily basis and uh, they left and never came back. Multiple safety checks ought to prevent an incident like the one outside of Las Cruces late last month. It starts with training before operating any of the equipment, plus practical and written tests. There are multiple layers of safety when fueling aircraft to prevent such an incident like the one that happened outside of Las Cruces from happening. For one, the fuel trucks have labels on it to tell what type of fuel. There are procedural safety measures and also different nozzles for different types of fuel for a different aircraft. Another visible safety measure is the fuel ticket itself. Blue for what's called avgas, yellow for jet A fuel. It should not have happened. Um, if, if even half of these procedures had been followed, then this could not have happened. This aircraft is similar to the Cessna the medical crew and cancer patient lost their lives in. Andre says he and his crew at Cutter Aviation understand how important their jobs are. We hold this very close to our, our hearts. We, we know in our business that there's a couple ways we could hurt families, and this is one of them. So we train our guys, and we train our staff, and we have really strict standards to make sure this doesn't happen again. 
As I said before, the problem was evident immediately after takeoff. The report says a medical crew member on the plane called a medical dispatcher to report they were returning to the Las Cruces airport because the right engine was smoking. Estella, back to you. Okay. Lights, camera, action. Christmas joy spread across boys and girls in El Paso as crews filmed an episode of the second season of the hit holiday show, The Great Christmas Light Fight. We feel that we have the best show in, El, in, in, in the country. And we, and we feel that that's the least that we can do for this great city and this great community. This is video of last year's display. It's the 10th year and appears to get bigger and better every year. So great that this year it's earning national recognition. The lawyers are one of 24 families across the U.S. competing for the grand prize of $50,000. And as you can see by this forest behind me, they just might have a winning chance. But it's not Christmas cheer for everyone in the neighborhood. Sometimes it could get a little too crazy and we can't really get to our houses. So, yeah, that's a problem. Some of the people, like, they litter. And like they leave a bunch of like trash and all that around the neighborhood. Those who live near the Loya say traffic, noise, and safety concerns about emergency vehicles have made them holiday Grinches. So, what does the mastermind behind it all say? Well, we hope that they come to understand that uh, giving back to the community is more important than any minor inconvenience that they suffer for a, a few weekends a, a, a year. The Great Christmas Light Fight will air on ABC7 this December. Until then, you'll just have to wait to see if judges Michael Maloney and Sabrina Soto choose the local house as the best holiday decor in the nation. Pilar Arias, ABC7.